Welcome to the Q&A session from Call for Curators. I'm Nona Markarian, and our guest is Dr. Marian Mulvey, a senior lecturer and program leader at MA MFA Curating of University of the West of England. Hi, Marian. Thank you very much for being here with us. Hi, Nona. Thanks for having me. And um, hi, everyone who's watching this. How are you? How is everything? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Um, it's a, a sort of grey November afternoon and I'm sitting in a very mm. institutional classroom. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but Are you yeah, at the university right now? Yeah, I'm at the university. Um, we've just come out of um, a programme leaders meeting um, and I'm okay. um, sort of putting together bits mm. for my next term when I meet my next students in January. Okay. Well, actually, uh, it would be interesting to hear more about the University of the West of England. Maybe you could tell us more about sure. it. Sure. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, University of the West of England is based in Bristol. We have four campuses across the city. Um, it is quite well known for its arts provision, but it also covers, um, yeah, a whole range of subjects so it's it's not just an arts university but um there is quite a kind of um buzz around our kind of creative subjects and i'm sitting currently in our bower ashton campus which is in a beautiful deer park uh, on the edge of the east of the city um and the campus that i teach the most from is actually right in the center of bristol where um we have um, a set of classrooms and kind of facilities um, in the Arnold Feeney building, which is a multi-arts venue and quite a famous one that opened in the 1960s, I believe. Um, so we're, the curating course itself is actually kind of um, taught out of one of our partners. Um, and we're also surrounded then by other partners such as Watershed Cinema and Spike Island art studios, studios and contemporary art gallery. So we're kind of right in the beating heart of the kind of creative hub of the city. But um, as with many cities, creative hubs move around, things move on, things change. So Bristol's got, um, yeah, a lot going on in terms of um, more DIY arts practice um, mm -hmm. and other initiatives and things being set up. Um, that are away from that kind of central hub um, where where we're based. So um, I guess that kind of gives a picture of the, the fact that if you did study MA curating with me in Bristol at UE, um, you'd be part of a much bigger university, but there is a real kind of focus on our creative subjects as well. Interesting. Thank you, Marianne. And since you mentioned so many partners um, when I read the description of the course, I think what is very special about it is that um, students are, they have placement at a certain cultural institutions, right? So it's yeah. not just attending lectures, but it's literally working or having like practical sessions at the institutions or how does that work? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that is basically our, um, I'd say there's kind of three USPs, but that would be the first one that, that um, most people kind of pick up on, because I think it's quite a unique course in that it not only offers work experience, it is extended over the course of a whole year. And I think that gives our students a real chance to feel very embedded within an organisation to not just kind of take on one or two smaller projects, but to kind of learn about the kind of life of the organization and really get in there in the nitty gritty, get to know colleagues, make friendships. I really see that happening, especially with some of the students um, based at Arnold Feeney, how, how kind of part of the, um, part of the culture and social life of the organization that they are, um, as well as doing their, their work. So um, yeah, so we have, um, a number of partners across Bristol, but also in our kind of neighbouring city, Cardiff in South Wales, which is in a different country, but part of the UK. Um, so that's super exciting because then that, that kind of gives um, us um, two city contexts to work within. 
but we also have partners um, that are based in the southwest region so um, we can also think about curating across other more rural kind of sites as well which is super interesting and the range of partners that we have um, kind of goes from film to um, social history, thinking about Bristol museums and their archives, um, to uh, social practice, working in a, a newer partner like Bricks, which is an artist-led organisation, which has a really strong kind of community interest. Um, then we have students who are based in, in much more kind of I guess traditional gallery settings like Spike Island um, and Arnolfini. Um, and then heritage organizations are also part of our portfolio. So we just have a new partnership with the National Trust um, in um, Tintsfield. There's a beautiful site um, not far outside of Bristol where we could have a student um, on a placement there. So. Yeah, there are lots of different contexts um, in which students are learning about curating. And I guess that would be the other USP is that we take this really interdisciplinary look at curating. Um, and we really come together around how do we orientate our work towards our publics? Who are who might our publics be? Um, so that's, yeah, that's I think where we bridge, where we kind of bring everyone together. Um, so yeah I guess yeah it's a very strong partnership model but um, what is quite unique about it is that the, the students who come and study here will be on a placement throughout the whole year um, as well as learning with me in the classroom and all the different people that I bring together through that as well. So what's the duration of the course it's one year? One year and it starts one in year. January and it runs okay. until December and then students do their final hand in the following January so there's a submission point the following January so it's exactly mm -hmm. one year yeah and um, I'm wondering how the hours are allocated for the theoretical part like for attending the yeah. lecture classes and uh, working at the institution yeah, good question, because people really want to know, you know, can I support myself um, and have an income alongside yeah. studying? And it's really important that students understand that this is a full time MA. Mm -hmm. um, yet your days will be allocated as um, Monday in the classroom with me um, and with the group learning together and then one other day you would assign for your placement. And then outside of that, there'll be expectations on your time, such as the readings, um, looking at other materials, coming together as a group to do little group projects, um, essay assignments. So it is a full-time MA, but we also really understand that pretty much everyone needs to have some sort of form of income. And most of our students also do a part-time job as well. Okay, so yeah. it's manageable still. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I yeah. think definitely okay. this time of year because you've got students who are manifesting their final projects between kind of September to end of November. So this time of year feels pretty busy. My students are looking a little, little bit burnt out and kind of, um, but I try and balance the last term with lots of really um, lovely kind of field trips. And, and we do, we do some quite um, gentle sessions as well and we think about future career and, and, and things so um, I suppose the first two terms from January until the summertime are, are I'm, I'm bringing lots of material to the students and we're really wrestling with that um, right. and then the last term it's their moment to shine and do their amazing final project and then we think about their their kind of future journey as well. Great yeah. and um I'm wondering what's the profile of the students and uh, who is eligible for applying for this course? Is it like for uh, curators who have already some sort of experience or people who just graduated or? I'm just waving. Sorry, everyone, you're gonna think I'm a bit nuts, but the lights are dimming oh. down. So I might actually just, I'm gonna go around and then turn them back on because I think sure. they might go off. So let's just do that. 
we're very energy conscious at UE. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Which can only be a good thing, right? Um, sorry, you were asking me about the, um, what student, how students come to the course, what they arrive with. Yeah, if they have to have some sort of experience already, or they can be just like newly graduated. So we students. work with people at really different stages. My age range um, this year is like 22 to 57. Okay. So we've got people in really different moments in their life, which is just so exciting. Um, you know, um, yeah, I have a grandmother in the classroom at the this year and and so you know and that's just really really amazing to kind of work with that kind of um range of people at different stages in their life i have someone who's making a career shift from teaching history to kind of more community-based art practices um so uh, i have a student who studied philosophy who is super into film um, is just sort of doing everything, seeing everything possible and is working at um, Watershed Cinema and they're a very recent graduate, so they're quite young. Um, so in terms of experience, people bring what they bring and then we work with that. Um, if people have had some kind of work experience where they've been in an office or they've been in a kind of public service setting, that is what um, is important to kind of, you know, bring into the interview work because we interview with our partners as well. Um, in terms of um, a degree, um, relevant subjects that, you know, I tend to think that pretty much anything can be relevant to curating. I didn't study, um, I studied classical studies and then contemporary art theory myself. So I think, you know, some we can make connections where we find them um but you know people come with history degrees or they come with art history degrees or they come some people apply who've got an archaeology background so there's a really wide range of subjects yeah. that would be relevant and i would say that some people have um, a little bit of experience they might have curated an exhibition before or put together some film programming but some people haven't done any of that and they're really excited about what curating might be and you know we kind of work with that energy as well so um i would say we're fairly open to what experience level and background you've got um awesome. and then yeah it's fair, yeah i get applications um quite international applications so it's it can be quite a mixed group but it is a small group so that is one of the other mm. I think selling points because you really make connections with your classmates and I encourage people to talk a lot and <laughs> we do lots of activities and we do lots of discussions so it is quite an intimate group um, and there's group work happening in kind of light touch ways and then also as part of the course as well so so it's it, 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 it's a setting that is a little bit like a laboratory if you yeah. like, rather than yeah. a kind of big swathe of people and yeah. in, in a lecture theatre. And how many people are usually selected? I'm currently group? working with nine and there's space for up to okay. 15. So, um, so yeah, we're sort, sort of looking at smaller kind of postgraduate size. So I assume it allows like a more tight and close connections between the group members. Yeah, this group really get good. on pretty well this year, mm -hmm. um, which is lovely to see. Um, you know, you can never tell what's going to happen when you put sort of nine people in a room, can you? <laughs> but um, this year, the group have made really, really good connections. They're super supportive of, uh, of one another. Um, and the other kind of selling point of or, or the way in which I'm approaching how we kind of come together because it's so multidisciplinary is that I'm really encouraging um, reflective practice and I'm really encouraging collaboration. So um, we reflect a lot on what they learn through the placement in the classroom. I encourage them to take what they learn in the classroom back into the um, placement, into the workplace. Um, and then we create a lot of collaborative moments, a lot of kind of um, 
co-working sort of um, activities so that for me there's like an ethos of collective practice which is running through it as well and because we've got that small group I think that has amazing possibilities and one example of this is in the third term um, I give the students um, the chance to run their own session so we call these experimental pedagogies we talk about it in term two um, we think about what they'd like to do. Is it going to relate to their final project? Do they want to test something out? And then they get together in pairs or, or groups of three to kind of collaborate and run their own, their own session for us. And we've been doing um, zine making. We've been doing incredible reading, listening and drawing practices. We've done really beautiful things that have been really quite moving in terms of how they see us as a group and how they want to work with each other and what they want to test out and what they've learned. So I think like that for me has been one of the highlights of teaching this year is those is okay. those kind of student run sessions. Yeah. Thank you, Marian. Well, um, I think I will ask one more question from my side. And as for the rest, I would encourage everyone to check all the details on the website. So we just don't go too deep into technical details, like how to apply the deadlines and uh, like career support and other things, which are very well stated on the website. I would just uh, quickly ask about if there are any scholarship opportunities uh, for people who are applying from UK, from Europe, from around the world, just. Sure. Yeah, I think what might be helpful is if, because there are, um, there, there, there's information on um, scholarship opportunities, which is on UE's website. So what I might oh, sure. do is send okay. you that page because that could be helpful for people who are um, interested to know that. I would say that if if anyone watching this is like curious or interested, um, I'm really happy for people to get in touch with me. I would also say look at our Instagram, which I'll send as well, because there you have examples of the kind of sessions we've been doing, the sorts of people we've been meeting, the places where we've been visiting. Um, and then lastly, we are starting again in January, on the 16th of January. So there's still time um, if people are interested to kind of work quite quickly to apply. Um, there's still time to get somebody set up with a with a placement and with a place on the course. So I'm very open to being contacted about that. My battery is um, going to conk out soon. Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I think we can we can close Might be a good this place. session already. Yeah, yeah. and um, this recording will be shared on our website and on our social media, and we will attach all the links all the useful information about this course. And thank you, Marianne, for being with us and also for being open to uh, to be contacted by other people. So yeah, I'm really open a lot. to that. Thank you so much, Nona. It's a real pleasure yeah. to work with you and, and uh, have this conversation. And thanks everyone Same for watching. For <laughs> thanks. Okay. thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, have a great day.